are Confessional Magazine, and this is More to the Story, brought to you today by Iris and Bo, whose toner helps keep my laugh lines in check, because you never know what our guests are going to say. Visit irisandbo.com today and use code CONFESSIONAL for 20% off. Someone said love in this heart of mine. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Confessional Magazine. I'm Taylor, and I am joined here today with the wonderful Andrew Werner. Thank you so much for being here, Andrew. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to touch base and uh, talk some details with you. Yeah, so Andrew is a celebrity photographer, but he is also the owner, stylist, creator of Floored Pins, and he's wearing one of these wonderful lapels right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, it's a whole roster, but I'm like, eh, it's just me. <laughs> so how did you first get into the photography world? So it's a really fun story because photography is something that I've always had an interest in. When I was little, I used to take pictures and develop rolls and rolls of film, or I had rolls of film developed. I didn't know how to develop them. And, you know, it, it was just always something that I gravitated to, wanting to connect with people, because I'm very much a people person. I love the human elements of everything, but then also just wanting to capture moments and make something that's as insignificant or significant as just a second in time last forever. So that's kind of always been around my aura. But um, when I went to school for musical theater, I couldn't dance or, you know, didn't have like the whole triple threat thing down. So I was like, you know, what? picked up a camera, went for it, and it just worked. Um, and then through my friends groups and everything, uh, I organically just started taking pictures of everything from set design to school events to news to, you know, really everything. And then moving yeah. back to New York City or where I'm from on Long Island after graduation, I was like, you know, this is fun. Let's try it. And I started going out in nightlife and to bars and clubs and promoters were like, what's your rate? We want to hire you. I'm like, I can make this into a living. And then it kind of just worked again. People liked my photos. And I figured what I wanted to do was I love fashion, fashion and art and culture and society. And like that whole thing really just appealed to me. So I figured out how to make it work. I taught myself how to shoot things like jewelry and interiors and headshots and all this stuff. But it stemmed from just being lost for a little bit and not knowing what worked and just trusting my instinct and being like, let's just try it. I have nothing to lose. There you go. I mean, that's such like an inspiration because you could have easily just been like, man, this isn't working and just move on to the next thing. I heard from so many people, um, and this is going back around 10 years, not to age myself, but people like photography is not really a career. It's something that you do like news or you know, where photos are needed, like when there's a war going on, God forbid, or like anything that's really important. And I was like, no, there are so many other special moments. And then I'm like, what about wedding photographers? What about advertising? What about marketing? They're like, oh, I, I guess. And I just went, I did, I tried, I learned, I failed a bunch of times, but I used those as benchmarks. Absolutely. And now you, I mean, you're photographing Big, big time names. Like I know you did Laverne Cox, which is just amazing. Oh, <laughs> I just... She's incredible. And funny story about that. I've known Laverne for almost a decade um, from when I first started my career, when I was shooting events and stuff. And, you know, she, she has this amazing, amazing soul and watching her career climb and just progress. It's so nice to see people that, you know, from before they were international icons and and um like social justice warriors to yes. see where they go so always stay close to people who have great potential yeah and great hearts and, that, and like, great hearts all... yeah and great hearts I mean hello so <laughs> yeah um so how do you when you're shooting these things because you are such a storyteller um how do you pull the inspiration or like find the right technique to like get your story told through photo? That's a really good question because there are so many stories to tell <clears throat> and there are infinite amount of ways to tell stories. So it really depends uh, how I approach a situation. Let's say I'm shooting for a jewelry company and they wanna tell a story about this new collection. 
I will send them a creative brief to find out what's the story that they want to tell, what inspired the collection, what, who is their target demographic, how are we going to sell this product without hitting someone over the face with buy this engagement ring. So it's working with every individual client, but also every individual person um, for weddings, when I shoot weddings or graduation portraits or new, even newborns or um, family events, it's finding out what, what the story is that they want to capture and the narrative that they want to tell. And I, I like to do that. You see a lot of photographers who, and I, I don't love this, but like a one trick pony, this is what they do, you know their thing. I try to be a chameleon of the camera where I can, you know, replicate, not replicate, but create different scenarios and have a whole breadth of styles to tell the stories that each person wants to tell. I love that because there's, like that. there is so much individuality with each story. And so you're able to pick and pull and create the whole thing. I don't like it being cookie cutter. Everyone is an individual and I like to capture that individuality. Yeah. And you do it so well. So That's how true. did you... When did you start working on your pins? And like, what was your inspiration between these? And what are they made out of? Because they're ah. so unique. I'm so interested in these. Thank you. Um, so the name of the line is Flirred Pins. And it came about when I was attending an event at Cipriani in New York City, which is this grandiose venue. It's absolutely stunning on 42nd Street. And I believe it was for FIT, honoring Linda Fargo of Bergdorf Goodman. And Linda Fargo is the kind of person who you get dressed up for. It, you, you have to make a statement. Um, so I couldn't find anything on the market that I wanted to wear as an accessory to really stand out from what I've kind of coined as like a sea of tuxedos, whether it be at red carpet, black tie events, weddings, guys traditionally were wearing the same thing and it was kind of bland. Yeah. So a boutonniere or a lapel flower is part of that whole dynamic ensemble that you can include to showcase individuality once again. Yeah. Couldn't find anything on the market that spoke to my values or what I wanted. So a lot of this stuff was mass produced overseas or very cheap materials. Couldn't find what I wanted. So on a very shoestring budget, I went to Michael's craft store. I got burlap, I spray painted fire engine red and plopped it on. It was something I considered at the time avant-garde, but it was a first step. Anyway, it got a lot of compliments that evening and different fashion directors were like, oh, I like these. Fast forward to a few weeks later, a fashion director asked if they can get a few for an editorial photo shoot. And then I approached this company in New York called the Accessory Think Tank that you know helps foster brands and tell their stories through their designs. Um, and Nancy Foreman at the Accessory Think Tank is incredible. So she helped me realize, you know what, there's a vacancy. We need Luxury, we need made in New York. We need all these things that stand for you. And it came about because I personally needed something, which a lot of brands, you know, that's how they start. And everything is sourced from almost every piece, every material, fabric, leather, exotic skin is sourced from New York, from the garment district. Everything is handcrafted in New York. And I'm certified by Pratt as a made in New York small business. So that's a big I thing. I love Pratt. My sister went to Pratt. <laughs> uh, I love them. And I also work with them and do a lot of their events. So I work with their whole team. Amazing school. Um, I didn't go there, but amazing school. Um, so, you know, it just came about of needing something to have that pop of personality when everyone else kind of looks pedestrian. And it just grew and grew. And I, over the last six or seven years now, have been in stores like Bergdorf Goodman Men's Store, Nordstrom, um, who else? Barney's. I was in Barney's for about five years from New York to Beverly Hills and did trunk shows in LA and New York. And what it's was exciting. That, what was that first feeling? Like, okay, so you went from spraying this burlap piece from Michael's or Joanne's or wherever you're from. And then all of a sudden you're seeing, you're seeing your product in stores like Barney's. Like that's wild. What yeah. was that first? What was that first like to be like, that's mine. Like I did that. It was exhilarating. It's the best feeling to see something that you, you like slave over and create and put so much love and passion and heart into to come to fruition. And it takes a lot, a lot of trials and tribulations to create the right thing and, you know, 
everyone has different budgets they work with. And I, I was trying to figure out what can I do and who is my target demographic? Who, who am I selling to? And initially I was like, okay, I'm selling to the guy who's going to tons of weddings. I'm selling to the, and again, I, I initially made them because I needed something. Whereas women had lots of accessories and wear colors and um, men couldn't. So they were geared initially towards men, but over the last few years, women buy them, eat them up, especially this, this is made out of uh, a raspberry sorbet pink patent leather, but I make it's them out beautiful. of leathers and silks and um, a lot, I have a huge collection in burlap and exotic skins. I had a collection made out of mink. I have a collection made out of boucle fabrics and the US Open is happening. And uh, I made a, one out of tennis ball material that I imported from France. That's the same boiled neon wool. So it's really cool because yes, they're the novelty ones, but you know, it's fun to just incorporate a little personality. It's endless. Like it really, like you, it's limitless, but the things yeah. that you can like create and source and create for, because the events, like who doesn't need something? I mean, how many times have I, even at like, as a woman, you're like running out to like an event and you're like, Oh, like say, like, what do I put on to add to this piece? But this is brilliant. Exactly. And let's be honest. I did not invent flowers, nor did I invent <laughs> the lapel flower. But what I did was took something that I needed to make work for me and just adjusted it. So I can't take credit for creating something or giving guys confidence or, you know, getting compliments for you if you walk into a room and everyone goes, what is that? Or, I mean, I run around the city and people are like, that's awesome. Where's it from? What does it mean? It's just really cool because everyone likes compliments. And everyone likes to feel good about themselves, especially when they feel like they look good. And if I can help make that happen for anybody, it makes the world a better place. Absolutely. Just building confidence and individuality is just yep. such a beautiful, great thing. So where can people find your, the floor depends um, in social media. Can they follow you alongside yeah. that end? Of course. So my personal handle uh, across social media is my name, Andrew Werner. Flirt Pins is just at Flirt Pins. And then um, sometimes depending on if it's award season or something, you can see a lot of them on the red carpet. I've had so many celebrities that have been fortunate enough to have don my lapel flowers on their, you know, tuxedos or suits to everything from the Academy Awards to the AMAs to magazine covers. I've had people like Don Lemon wear them. Billy Porter, who is a, a friend, has worn them to places in magazines. I've had Tom Hanks, former president Bill Clinton. Um, Miss J from America's Next Top Model has worn them during Fashion Week. Um, Wolfgang Puck. It, it, but, but what's great about something as simple but as significant as this accessory is sportscasters wear them. Um, Patrick McEnroe wears them when he hosts the US Open on ESPN. So there's no gender specific. There's no uh, job specific. You want to look and you want to feel good, you throw one of these on. Absolutely. It just, it <laughs> totally changes the whole perspective and it's eye catching and beautiful. And I'm so excited you. for your journey and your story to just be shared and for everybody to get this pop of joy on their shirt. <laughs> Thank you. And you know, right now, as the world has been changing in the economy, um, they are available on flirtpins.com. But definitely check out the social media because sometimes I post social media only sales or VIP codes. And it's always, it's a great gift. It's a great gift for Absolutely. the guy who, or anyone who thinks they have everything. <laughs> and anyone that doesn't have anything, like this is literally for everyone. Everyone can get mm -hmm. on board with these. So. It's an equal opportunity Andrew accessory. <laughs> yes. Um, so I always like to ask this question. Um, in five years, where would you like to see yourself both personally and professionally? That's a really good question. In five years, I would like to see myself. That's a really good question. Um, I'd like to see myself doing more of what I would like to. And that is creating and partnering with brands that speak to my, my voice, partnering, whether that's with photography or not that I'm a billboard for anything, but I stay true to myself, but working with people who share the same dreams and goals. 
uh, working with makeup artists and hairstylists and designers and people who want to create something beautiful in fashion editorials. I've also found myself frequently over the last few years working with schools and teaching or coming in and being on panels and giving advice. So I'm not sure if teaching is in my future at the moment, but going through the experiences I've had and things that I've learned throughout the course of my years in this career and making mistakes and what it takes to build confidence and the power of the word yes, but also the power word no, being maybe more confident in, you know, just taking control and just saying, you know, this is a great fit or no, this isn't a great fit. So seeing the trajectory that I'm grateful to be on and just watching it continue. Yeah, I can actually see you now that you said that and then you brought up Miss J earlier, that I could see you like they need you on Project Run Runway as like <laughs> one of the panelists for real. <laughs> I would love that. I did uh, back in New York City a few years ago, there's a competition called So You Think You Can Drag. And I started out my photography career in nightlife. So this was something very special to me. And this fantastic drag queen named Paige Turner hosted this competition. And it was fantastic because you got to watch people on stage being vulnerable, doing something they love and giving them feedback, not to have the whole American Idol where you have a nice judge, a mean judge, and then who's somewhat indifferent. It, it was nice to give feedback and say, this is what you can do better from a photography perspective or a a fashion perspective, it was very exciting to add, you know, some advice to people yeah. and watch them receive it so they could better their craft based on my experiences and what I've learned doing what I've done. Because it's validating for you too, because you, it's, you have worked so long and so hard to get to where you are in this industry. So why wouldn't somebody look up to you when they're trying to you know, break exactly. into this. So exactly. and people take being, a lot of appreciation to it. So yeah, that being said, what kind of advice would you give to somebody maybe trying to make it into either the photography or the fashion industry? It's tough. It's really tough. And every day is every day is a whole new adventure, to put it lightly. I mean, with photography, okay, I'll start off with photography. Photography, everyone has a phone. Most people have phones and every, almost all of them have cameras of some sort. And I'm constantly asked, how do I feel about the art of photography and how it's shifted with everyone being able to take pictures? And I'm like, listen, there are pros and cons to everything. There are ways to see something as optimistic and a good future. And there are ways that there's so much more content out there that no one gives anything about. So I advise people to take picture pictures, to take videos, to tell the stories that they want, and then to refine their craft if they want to do that more often. So if you're taking pictures, is this a good picture? Yes or no? It's kind of like that flow chart where you can say, if this works, yes, go this way. Um, so it, it's, there's always going to be a need for the high res, hardcore, actual job and art of photography. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be a need for social media content. So they can both work hand in hand. So when it comes to it, find out what works for you, what you're, and then pair it with what you're actually good at. So if you're not good at taking pictures, even though you love it, maybe it's not the best profession. Sorry, there's only so many different ways you can sugarcoat it. We're not gonna give you a trophy <laughs> just for trying your best if it's not gonna work. Um, but that's something that's very important. So photography, it's constantly evolving. Technology is always coming out and improving and we all have it at our literal fingertips. So that's the advice in terms of doing what you do, trying what you want to try. If it doesn't work, great. Try something new. And then in terms of the fashion, fashion is always changing. People put so much stress on fashion. And while looking good is always a constant and feeling good about yourself, you have to do it right. Again, what's right for you? Mm -hmm. So if something makes you feel good, maybe it's not in trend, great. That's why there are classic brands. There are trendy brands. There are brands that are super expensive that no one can touch because no one's really touching them. Um, but fashion is like this. It comes and goes so quickly. I'm mm -hmm. backstage during Fashion Week and people are stressing out. I'm like, yeah, get the moment, but it's going to change in four months anyway. Yeah, it's so true. Life is short. Have a good time. Life is short. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that, Andrew. And I just, I thank you so much for, you know, sharing a little bit of your story with us. Yeah. And I am just so excited to just see where this goes, because even though you've been, you know, in this industry for so long, it's still just the beginning because the more it's shared, the more we're just going to see and bring joy and color and absolutely beauty. And <laughs> never forget that people can change their careers all the time. There is nothing embarrassing or crazy about starting over at any age. I didn't know what I wanted to do for a long time. And then I'm like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to try. I'm going to do it. And it worked for me. I have friends who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, who have had to start over for one reason or another, and they just make it work. Mm -hmm. So just keep being you and do something that makes you happy. Amen. And hopefully it'll bring success. But success is different to every person. So just keep doing you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andrew. And of everybody, course. please follow Andrew Werner um, on all social media. And then Floored Pins, you can find them on uh, Instagram, but also just Google. Just Google them and you'll find them and see them all over the runway. And thank you so much, Andrew. Of course. <laughs> we will talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. So much I love in this heart of mine